Good afternoon. How's everybody doing today? Good? Well, welcome to Media Day. Uh, glad, uh, glad you guys took the opportunity to come out here and see us today. Um, camp's going well so far. We've got two, uh, two great days of shorts in. Uh, you know, kids are running around, uh, putting a lot of miles on out there um, with a lot of energy, uh, a lot of confidence, I think. I think you'll see that when you, I think we've got roughly 15 offense, 15 defensive uh, players that'll be able to sat, sit down with and talk and, and our entire coaching staff will be available to you today. It'll be a little bit different. I don't know if EJ mentioned to you that it's been in the past. Uh, we've kind of changed it up a little bit. I think better for you guys uh, and better for our kids. Um, and and uh, we're really excited about where we are. Um, you know, we got a, we got a great group of guys out there. We have 20, you know, 23 incoming freshmen that we're excited about. You know what they've done so far in two days. Um, obviously, the real stuff when the, the shoulder pads get put on tomorrow um, will show us a little bit more. Um, we've got 20 seniors. You know, it's a it's a it's a great senior class. Um, and this morning, five of those 20 seniors were you know voted, which is the most we've had since I've been here. Five of them were voted on our you know our you know unity council, which we call our Eagles. Um, so they were voted on that today, and uh, so. I think anytime you talk about having a good football team, a successful football team, you better have leaders. And really, that front row is where most of our seniors sit. Um, and if you got great leadership up here, you know it's their it's their football team, and we expect them to lead it. So um, that's that's kind of what I've got. Uh, I'll kind of leave it open for questions for you guys. Pat, going on what we were just talking about, so many teams when they have a new head coach, new staff come in, they lose a lot of those experienced players, and, and they don't they don't keep them. You're able to keep so many guys here. How much has your success over season one and what you're hoping to do in season two really counted on those, those holdover players that have bought into what you're doing? Well, I, I, you know, I can't really answer that question. I think we got super kids. I think, you know, they bought in. You know, I think that's a tribute to what our entire staff thinks. There's 39 people that work in this, this, uh, this office complex. Uh, it's a tribute to everything they've done. Uh, to really engage these kids and show them that we care, you know, I'll go back to you know quote Lee Trestle. They don't care how much you know, okay? They don't care how much you know as a football coach until they know how much you care. And I think our you know our players have saw that hey these coaches care about us, and then it's easy they're going to stick around. Now we've had some guys take off and go and you know look for opportunities to play. Um, and I think you know you have that every, everywhere in the country. Um, but you know I appreciate you saying that we've had a lot of guys stick around. I didn't notice that. That was the uh, most this defense that that's different from last year. What do you think they really knew it need to improve to get to where you want to be? You know, I think, you know, every year you get a little bit better. And I think, you know, through the years that I've been involved with defense, um, we, we've, we've seen it take that way. Right now, they're a lot smarter, okay? And, you know, that word knowledge up there in the back of the room is, is there for a reason because it's one of the key components uh, to playing, you know, good football offensively and defensively. But I think, you know, I think them understanding, you know, even some of our freshmen did some stuff today that I was like, you know, I mean, Bryson Gardner and DeMar Hamlin made a call today and they like picked it up like that and they understand and they've, you know, been well coached over at Central Catholic. Uh, but just to see them kind of pick up like that, you know, in the second day in shorts was, was you know, quite amazing. Um, but I think the knowledge is the key. I mean, are we bigger? Yeah. Are we faster? I mean, do we look good? I think when you walk out there and you look, you know, I don't know, you guys tell me, I think it's a pretty good looking football team out there. Um, and I think they're in pretty good shape. So I think we got a bigger, faster, stronger football team, but I think we definitely, okay, have a smarter football team. And I, I think as a football coach, when you walk in a classroom and you can, you know, talk, talk shop, okay, talk shop with those guys and they understand the language, the verbiage, then you got a chance. Who are the uh, five seniors? You said five seniors got voted on to the. Oh, you yeah, put me on the spot here. I would say it is, I might be wrong. Biz, Caprera, uh, Galambos, Reggie Mitchell, and who'd I forget? And they're going to get mad like, Coach, how'd you forget me? Because I'm getting old. Um, let me see who else that is. Um, Juan. Juan Price. Who's it's the first? It's voted on by the entire team, yeah. The upperclassmen get two votes, and the, the freshmen they only get one. They only count as one right now. They don't know enough. We don't give them that much. Their knowledge is not as good. When they have more knowledge of who they are, we give them another, uh, another year, they get another vote. What's their specific roles? You know, they have all kinds of roles. They get to pick the uniforms. That's their favorite role is, you know, they want to know what kind of socks they get to wear, what kind of helmet they're going to wear. They got another option this, this year, which probably be a pain in my butt, 
because they want to wear this and I want to wear that. And but I got to listen to them. So they have all kinds of you know decisions. Uh, we'll have an Eagle you know Unity you know Council meeting and and uh, you know give them an option to uh, you know talk about stuff. Do you have players come in your office much in season or off season just to discuss things that are bothering them? Sometimes, hopefully, they you know they discuss that and have one of the, the you know the Eagles come up and talk to us about exactly what's going on, um, but not not very often. I mean, I think we got a pretty good uh, pulse on what's going on, and um, but you know the, the, they really come up. You know what they come up for, Jerry? They come up to change their number. Coach, can I get this number? You know, um, but uh, no, you know, and I've got them in there. I'm calling them in, um, but you feel good when they do come up in your office just for nothing. That's what you know. Uh, when guys just come up and they slouch in the chair and just kind of hang out, they're loose. Uh, that's when you know you got a good relationship. Do you feel like you have more playmakers on defense this year? You said last year that had a lot of confidence. Like more than you'd like to. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you got to make plays whether you're pressuring or you're playing base. Uh, we do have more playmakers. You know, and you know, with that knowledge, I think you know they'll have more you know abilities to make plays and. Um, be in better position to make those plays. But, you know, we had playmakers last year. Do we have more? We got more competition. Um, you know, when you look at the linebacking core, we are much deeper at the linebacking core. There's a, a big competition going out there to st at the start position right now. We know Bam can go into the boundary, but, um, you know, he, he's over there, you know, fighting with Elijah and Sean, uh, Idoa and, and uh, Jalen Williams and Anthony McKee. I mean, there's some players that we didn't have a year ago. Uh, we were plugging up holes. I mean, the defensive end spot, we got more playmakers, okay? Last year against Iowa, and, you know, you go put that game on. Unfortunately, I was home, and my son put on the, the Iowa game that was on the Big Ten Network or something this weekend. You know, there's nothing on TV anymore. I don't know what you guys watch uh, besides the Olympics. But so he flips that on. We're watching the two-minute, and, and I already knew it, but you just watch the TV game, which I don't get to watch many TV games. You watch how we did not get a rush. And three of the last six plays of that game were quarterback scrambles for, for yardage and you know, getting to that 50 some yard field goal. So um, we got more guys that are going to make a play. And if Juan Price is on the field at that point, you know, I think it ends in a different way. So we do have more guys I think can make those plays. Put too much pressure on one player, but can Dwayne Hendricks kind of help fill that hole? Oh, he's certainly, you know, there's no, there's no pressure. They like pressure. You know, Dwayne Hendricks, Folston, I mean, you know, Roy Blair, I mean, we've got some guys that uh, will be able to go in there and give a guy a blow. So not only will they be fresher, uh, we'll have more playmakers on the field. It's not just putting a guy out there to give a guy a blow. You're, you're going to kind of look forward to what they can do. After we are the head coach of the program, and now you have an offensive coordinator who you have a uh, history with, with a, a relationship with, how does that uh, benefit not only on game days, but also right now, sort of, so to speak? Yeah, you know, I think anytime, you know, you know, and, you know, whether it's Cheney or Canada, we had a relationship, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, so I don't really see it a whole lot different from what it was a year ago. I mean, we have our philosophies on what we want to do. I think when you hire a guy, you have the same philosophies. Um, you know, we've just happened to hire a guy that I knew a little bit better than, than, than the last guy. And Matt's, Matt's an unbelievable guy. He's got, uh, you know, a great rapport with the kids. Um, he's very positive. He's very energetic. And, uh, and he's got a great mind. I think, I think you'll see that come September 3rd that offensively we're doing some good stuff. And, and I think the kids like what they're hearing and seeing. Do you envision yourself uh, becoming, you know, as you become a head coach, a guy that would want to hand, handle more offensive responsibilities on game days? Or I'm sorry, say that again because CJ distracted me. Do you, do you envision yourself as you continue in, in this role becoming somebody who's more has more of an impact on some of the offensive coordinators' duties last year, this year, uh, on game days, or is that something you always want to kind of limit, limit to your offensive coordinators? I'm going to limit to my offensive coordinators. I mean, I'll have my input. Hey, you know, if we're if, if we're in, you know four down territory, which will also you know affect you know that play call. But uh, you know, I'm going to leave it to him. I mean, that's you know, no one messed with me. I think anytime you got someone in your ear telling you what to write, then you start to second guess yourself whether it's the first. And then, and then we got problems. And then he can always point the finger and say, hey, it's your fault. You know, Matt Canna and Josh Conklin and Andre Powell, for that matter, as our special teams coordinator, are all capable of making that call. It's what they do every day. That's what they prepare for. We sit out at practice every day. I don't tell them what to call there. Um, you know, we'll have periods where we say, hey, just call it. Don't script it. You know, a lot of times we want to see a, a certain offensive play versus a defensive play. But when we have a call period out there, I don't help them then. So for me to do it on one of those, you know, 12 days of, 
uh, you know, on Saturdays or game days would kind of be, you know, odd. You were, uh, you were talking uh, yesterday about the amount of the pursuit of girls' goals going into this season. How did that mantra sort of come to bed the, uh, the pursuit? The pursuit, um, you know, I think I kind of mentioned it yesterday. It's just something we came up with, you know, as a staff. We sit here and think and bang different words around. What are we trying to do? And, you know, um, you know, last year it was earn a jersey. I don't know if you guys didn't notice it, I guess. But, uh, you know, um, you, you had to earn that jersey you're wearing and, and, you know, earn the right to, to uh, you know, wear that pit and your name on the back of the jersey. I think they've earned that. Um, but, you know, it's just kind of the lingo we wanted to use and um, just give the kids a catchphrase that, that this is what we're doing, okay? We all talk about things like winning the Coastal Division, playing in the ACC Championship, potential to winning that. With the team and the guys that you all have now, how realistic of a goal do you guys think that is? I don't know. I think it's real realistic. I think, I think if we don't think that's realistic, we got major issues. Okay. Um, you know, I think anything, anything you want to do, you better, you better put your name on it, and, and you better say you're going to do it. I mean, we're six points away from it last year. Quite honestly, I don't know where you thought we were a year ago, but we're six points away from a championship last year, being in that, that game against Clemson. You know, we beat North Carolina on Thursday night, and I did a poor job. You know, we're in that game, you know, and, and maybe we don't lose that last game of the season. But either way, we're one game away. We're six points away from it, and I can call it two plays right now where we're in it. Okay, um, and when you look at the Coastal Division, last three years it's been three different teams. Okay, and you know, I look at it and say we're just as good as any of those in that you know in that championship. So. We'd like to be there. That's the goal. That's the pursuit. Hey, Coach, uh, last week I think you mentioned that we might have had a higher team in the second half of the year last year, second part of the schedule. Um, and we, we have a lot of big games up front this year, too. Mm -hmm. uh, let us know a little bit about how you might be able to uh, change things around so that they don't get gassed out toward the uh, last couple games of the year. Well, it's, you know, it's hard. I don't know if you change things around or you know, move your squad around, but I think our depth is a little bit better. You know, we talked about, you know, maybe having some freshmen that can come in and help us out. I feel, you know, good at a place, but I think depth corrects that. When you can't sub and you feel like, you know, you had, you know, 10 seniors, 11 seniors a year ago, you just, you just didn't have as much depth. We have more depth right now than we've had a year ago. Okay, now we got to maintain that depth. You know, it's our job as coaches to keep them fresh as we possibly can. Now we can keep them fresh and then all of a sudden they don't look good. So it's like you got to practice more. So there's a, you know, there's a fine line on how you do that. But the, the easiest thing is to have more players out there that can play for you. You know, and if you, you know, if you're playing, we played five offensive linemen the entire year. You know, we didn't have a sixth guy come in really. I mean, Bookster probably was the next guy in, didn't get enough snaps. Uh, he played more snaps in the Navy game than he played the entire year, probably twice as many. Um, so, I mean, that's how you become not a tired team is when you're able to, hey, put a second offensive line in there, let's go. You know, put some put some subs in, and and let those guys go to work and show what they have. Feel like you have to develop more depth. Is there any positions in particular? You know, I, I'd say um, more depth. Where you would need maybe. Practice. I mean, I, I think we, you know, right now I'd say probably the D tackle. We've got to develop more depth there, the D tackle position. You know, a year ago we were light in the D end and we're trying to develop some guys and it took too long. Um, you know, we've moved a Mike Herndon over to D, D tackle to give us a little bit more depth there. I guess that's probably the answer right there, D-tackle. I uh, should have told you that. I don't know if he's on the roster there, but I mean, Mike's done a great job the last two years, for, or two days, as far as his recall from where he was a year ago. Um, mm -hmm. But we've moved him over just to kind of ensure, ensure some depth there. And, um, so that's kind of a weakness we took, you know, a little bit away from the offense because we are strong on the offense line. So I'd say D-tackle. With all the depth you guys have at running back and uh, offensive line as well, have you given any thought to what style of offense you want to run? Do you maybe want to? focus on a power run heavy scheme this year? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, you have to be versatile. I mean, I think there's going to be opportunities to put two and three backs out on the field. Um, you know, uh, we can also put James Conner at defensive end. I mean, he talked about wanting to play a little DN. Tweet that out. Um, you know, Quadri also says he'll rush the quarterback on third down, too. So we got a lot of guys that, you know, they're, they're willing to do different stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, and then you got guys on defense who want to play offense. They want to play everything. Um, but, uh, you know, we're going to use our personnel, but you can't, you know, line up and play three backs all day um, so you don't become just, you know, in a, in a clump just doing one thing. So, you know, we'll be very, very multiple as far as our personnel, but we'll be able to get some backs on the field without a question. A lot of people say it takes three or four years to build a program. Why do you think you can get it done in your second? 
I don't know. We're going to find out, Jerry. I don't know. I mean, I, I just think it's you know it's what you do and how you do it. I mean, um, I think people said if anybody comes in and says they want to do it in three or four years, you know, you guys should just kind of go back to your offices, wait till three or four years down the line. I don't know if anybody's really had that attitude, um, but uh, you know, I think everybody I'm, anywhere I've ever been, we've talked about doing it right now, and um, I think that's uh, kind of our our attitude and you know that's up on the wall too. You mentioned the six being the six points away uh are that close. Where is the line between especially Dory Camp of like reinforcing that but also stressing especially the younger guys that those being that six points away isn't where you start? Well that was last year. So that's where it starts and you know you didn't get there by accident, you know. There was a lot of hard work that goes into that uh, that six points that you were shy, and you know, you got to make up. It's a game of inches, and there's a you know inch everywhere. We can find it. You know, I, I mentioned two plays in that game. I could mention you know probably 25 to be honest with you, where we could have taken it over at that point. But you know, there's always two major plays. But it's a game of inches. You don't you don't drop the ball. You know, you don't have a penalty. You don't give up this or that. You know, you don't have a tired football team. I mean, there, there's so many components that go into it. Uh, I, you know, I think it comes down to that. You mentioned the North Carolina game earlier. How important is it to improve at home? How do you go about that? You know, if we focus on just improving at home, we'll probably fail on the road. So I think it's you know, win each game, home or away. Um, but I think when you're at home, you got to play. You got to practice in that facility. It really is. I mean, it's got to be a home. When you you say home, what is home? It's a place you go. You know, you go home every night and you put your head on the pillow at night, right? And, uh, and I think you know when you talk about playing in a facility and you talk about home, it's a matter of going to that home and putting your feet and your cleats, you know, on that field and, and actually playing the game. And um, you know we had great opportunity last uh, last spring to get in there. I think three opportunities, which you know was three more than we had the spring before. So our guys have a little bit more um, idea of what we need to do in that facility. You, you, you know, it's like playing basketball. If you play basketball on the home court and you're always in that gym or that backyard, and then all of a sudden you got to go to someone else's backyard. It's a little different. The hoop's a little different. And we know it's 100 yards and all that, but uh, 54 yards wide. However, you know, you want to feel good in your home. And, and uh, having the opportunity to go there in the spring and go there this fall will be real, real important. I think that game this year that probably 90% of the Um, you know, we keep our guys grounded and, and, uh, and focused on really what we need to do. Um, because, you know, if we, you win one game a year, that's probably not going to be real good. Uh, I don't think anybody, you know, in this room would be happy. I don't think any, any one of our football players uh, or anybody on this team would be very happy. So, um, you know, we're not going to make that. I mean, that's, you know, you guys may make that. We won't be making that, uh, that mistake. We'll be locked in, and, and that won't be an excuse. Um, you know, Nate's just a calm guy. Try to tries to do his job. You know, you get an opportunity to, to talk to him, but uh, you know, very intelligent, uh, manages the game, and and has gained the respect the right way from our from our team. Um, you know, he was you know one of those eagles, and you know, just EJ threw that piece of paper at me just to correct me. Um, you know, that Unity Council, Chris was Biznawati, Price, Peterman, uh, Galambos, and and Reggie Mitchell. Just to correct that, but. Uh, um, you know, Nathan's just done a nice job at not trying to do too much. Some guys try too hard. He's just being who he is, and that's been that's been good enough for our kids. Hey, Pat, um, how confident your special teams ability to set up good field position for uh, the team this year? Well, it's critical. I think you know, uh, it's a it's a phase of the game that you know everybody wants to talk about offense and defense. That's, I appreciate you asking that special teams question. But Andre Powell uh, does a nice job, and you know, when you got Chris Blewett and uh, Ryan Winslow as your two kickers. Um, you know, I'm telling you, Chris Wood has as good a spring. Um, and you talk about being six points away or, you know, field goal away from, you know, a couple more wins. Uh, but Chris Bullitt's had a great spring and so far two great uh, days in, in the fall here. Uh, we got two, two great kickers, you know, and if they play great on game days, uh, those two can help us not only win games with points, um, but help a ton with field position. That's just been a lot of talk about your experience 
wide receivers. Would you like to see those guys come in here with a chip on their shoulder? And, and they did come in with a chip on their shoulder? Yeah, I think I think the wideouts have come in with a chip. I think they've come in to compete. I think they know, you know, they, they it's not like they came in and they haven't seen each other. All, they know who they are. They've run next to each other. They've lifted next to each other. They've lived next to each other. They've hung out on a Thursday night next to each other. Um, so they know what the competition is. They're not kind of going, hey, look what you did this summer. You know, they're not going to be surprised. But I think they do have a chip on their shoulder. I think they hear people talk about, hey, you know, we lost Tyler Boyd. You know, who do we have left? And and I think everybody, you know, I think everybody in the right mind should want to be that guy, that next guy that's going to get the rock. And you know, we, we got to find those guys. And I think, I think we got plenty of playmakers out there that uh, if we can get them the ball, we protect the quarterback. Um, you know, we can get the ball to those guys. Is there anything you can point to why the team is typically better in the second half and the first half? Now, yourself always mentioned Iowa, North Carolina. You know, if I knew, you know, if I knew. Um, I would try to do it in the first half, but you know, I, I'll go back to that word back there, that knowledge. Okay, um, you know, an offense or a defense can only run so many plays, right? They can't come in with this gigantic game plan. But I think one of the things, you know, I think they come in that second half with a little bit more knowledge of what they're trying to do today. You know, I mean, people are going to come spring something on you, and you know, you don't know what they're going to do. You know, and a lot of times you prepare for stuff offensively and defensively. Offensively, you may prepare for a four-three, and you get a three-four. So there's different things that you've got to adjust, and it takes time. And when you have a you know halftime just to sit down, even if it's for 10 minutes, you guys don't. I wish you guys could come in and watch a halftime show. It's a circus, okay? How fast it happens, and you better be locked in. You better know the terminology um, of what's going on in that room. But uh, you know, I think at halftime, our coaches have done a good job of coming in and saying, "Hey, this is what they're doing, and this is what we're going to do too." So it's a you know it's a chess match out there. And, but our guys, I think, have a feel in the second half of what we're doing. Now we got to do that again, you know. But now. They got they got their players too, so you know what's the team going to do this year to counteract what you did this year? It's a you know we'll see. Next up, and has Dante stepped up and become maybe a leader of those, those guys? Yeah, I think I think you know you know we we talk about each one of our positions got a cowbell you know that leader of that group, and I think Dante's would probably if you ask Coach Sherman who's who's the cowbell of your group, I would probably say it'd be Dante's. I mean he's the older guy, uh, he's graduated. Working on his MBA, and um, I would say he's the he's the lead, leader out there. Um, you know, yesterday he came out. I have to watch the tape today, and he kind of went back to his old ways. I think they were out there just playing ball during the summer when we weren't watching, so uh, uh, his knowledge wasn't as good as yesterday. And I'm talking the the, the little 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 technique things, alignment things, and I think he was a lot better today because I, you know, said something to him during a uh, walkthrough of just focusing on little things. But, you know, those guys go rogue on you and go back to the old school and nobody's talking to them, no one's watching tape with them. Um, but, you know, Jordan just needs to keep doing what he's doing. I mean, he's bigger, he's faster, he's smarter, and uh, he just needs to continue to do what he did last year. Uh, you know, he's, he was a player of the year for a reason, and he just needs to continue. You know, we can't have expectations for Jordan to be here and all of a sudden he gets here and, he, you know, I mean, it's a different day. You know, it's a different game. It's a different week in a year. And I think, uh, you know, Jordan just needs to play within the framework of the defense and not try to do too much. How big of an adjustment is it moving from the money to the star? You know, it's not. I think somebody asked that the other day. Uh, it's really not a big adjustment. You know, you're playing a little bit more space. That's probably the biggest adjustment. You're talking from, you know, field backer to boundary backer. There's more receivers out there. There's more area. And you've got to make more, you know, tackles in space, and that's, you know, you're probably referring to Bam Bradley and his move out there. Uh, takes a little bit better athlete out to the field, um, and uh, and Bam really worked his, you know, his tail off this off season to, you know, be a guy out there. I mean, you could possibly have three seniors starting, from you know the money to the star. Any additional questions? Okay, I have one, coach. Uh, now that you're your second year here in the ACC, uh, you're at the treetop level now. You were a DC over at Michigan State. What what kind of deep, what kind of differences do you see in the a, uh, ACC offenses that we're facing you're facing now as opposed to those Big Ten offenses you had for all those many years? You know, good question. I mean, I think the offenses across the country are very similar. You know, we're going to go out in the Big Twelve and and compete there this year. But when you watch, um, you know, you're going to see. The very similar offenses come out week by week. I mean, from Villanova, that's going to come in here to Penn State, who's you know got an offense they brought from Fordham. 
uh, to Oklahoma State, to North Carolina. I mean, you're going to see you know, a lot of spread, which is the same thing we saw in the Big Ten. Uh, so I don't see a huge difference in, in the styles uh, of off offenses. It's just different guys. It's a different quarterback that does this a little bit better than that. I mean, there's different people playing the same offenses. It's amazing how many people just they go steal an offense over here, steal a defense over there, and they all run the same defense. They all run the same offense. Uh, you know, when you look at Villanova, Villanova's offense went down and studied at North Carolina State a couple years ago. They're running the same offense as, as we see every day. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot of similarities, to, you know, in offenses across the country. Um, and, you know, most of the time, again, why does that happen? You know, in the Big Ten, if you're an offense coordinator, you're going, okay, what are we going to do different this year? You go see somebody. You go talk. You know, you go talk shop with somebody. But, you know, if you're, you know, if you're at Indiana, you can't go to Minnesota. They're not going to talk to you. So you go out of conference. So the Big Ten goes and talks to the ACC. The ACC goes and talks to the Big 12. So you, you spread out there and, and uh, you find out you know, who knows what. And, and, uh, and again, you start to see everybody's very similar. Uh, they might call it a little bit different. Um, their, their peoples might be a little bit different. But uh, the scheme is very similar. Good. OK. Coach, thank you very much. Thank you.